Um, thanks, Kim. Um, as Kim said, I'm Dominique, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my experiences. Ooh, wrong order. Um, is this the 20 thing? Um, so I've just started my four-year degree of Bachelor of Agricultural Science at UTAS in Hobart. Um, a little about my background, I grew up in the northwest coast of Tasmania um, on a small sort of hobby farm, but I never really became interested in agriculture until I uh, started participating in the Pixie program. Um, my interests lie in science, particularly in biology, and my dad is a plant pathologist, so I have to admit after studying biology I, I developed a bit of a a fascination with plants as well. Um, so with the Pixie organisation, uh, they started in Hobart in 2006. It stands for the Primary Industry Centre for Science Education. Uh, they're some of the lovely people responsible for it. Um, and what they do, it's designed to stimulate student interest in studying the science at university uh, with a pathway into the primary industry. Um, so what they do is they run camps, they run uh, science investigation awards, so uh, competitions for students to do, make their own uh, science experiment and present it to a panel of judges. Um, they also have teacher workshops as well to get science teachers more interested in ag to teach it in their classes. And so <coughs> what I did was I went to a Pixie uh, camp week-long camp in the north of Tasmania for college students. Um, and what we did was we visited local farms. Uh, this is Pixie around Australia. They started in, in uh, Hobart, and now they're at a bunch of universities around Australia. Um, so I went on this week-long camp where we went to uh, lots of different farms around uh, the north of Tasmania, particularly ones using innovative techniques. Uh, we went to some research laboratories and to some uh, also to some analytical, yeah, some labs and some um, research companies as well. Uh, this is of one of the farms we went to where they have Wessex Saddleback pigs. They're actually from Britain, but they're now extinct there and they're mainly uh, bred in Australia and New Zealand. Um, just recently, only 100 breeding females were recorded in Australia and they're delicious, so it's, they really should be everywhere. Um, so it was a fantastic camp. Uh, we we learnt a, a great deal in a short amount of time. Uh, I love this guy's t-shirt. Do you know what it means? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Ferris wheel. Um, yep. More of pigs. Um, yeah, all the people were great, and uh, quite a few of them are actually studying at UTAS uh, a year ahead of me, or they're studying agriculture or uh, just general science. And it's I'm quite shocked uh, what a number of them have been through the Pixie, Pixie program, it really has uh, made a huge impression on the number of students uh, studying at university. A uh, little cherry farm as well, it's delicious. Uh, that's hydroponic potatoes. Um, that is pasture research for, for um, livestock. Uh, hydroponic tomatoes as well. And so um, after the week camp, all the students were allowed to choose a an industry or an individual scientist to go and work with for a week. And I went and worked at Paracto. Um, Paracto was a contract agricultural research company. They started in Devonport, which is where I live. Uh, and now they're all over Australia and New Zealand. Um, so what they do is they test um, experimental agrochemicals for chemical companies. And that involves doing a lot of field trials. So I spent the week with the field technicians going out, setting up trials, uh, assessing trials and in some cases harvesting them as well. So obviously the results would go back to the, to the office, they would be written up into a report and sent back to the client. Um, so that was another really great week and because Practor has such a range of clients, I learned a great deal about a lot of different cultivars. Uh, I got to see a lot about how, how agriculture is very diverse in Tasmania. Um, the people I worked with at Practor were all lovely and a lot of young people as well. Uh, I really enjoyed my time there. I enjoyed it so much that I went back to work for them after year 12. 
I stayed there for three months over the summer and learnt a lot more about uh, how field trials work and also a little about data handling and report writing side as well. So that's uh, useful and I, I've seen that's been even use more useful uh, in other jobs I've worked in. Um, so when the summer trial season came to an end, uh, my boss wanted to help me find something the rest of my gap year. He considered sending me up to Bundaberg, uh, which is another Fracto office. And, um, but in the end, he contacted some people overseas to see if uh, anyone in Europe needed help in their, over their European summer. And we got a, a reply back from Hubert in Toulouse. Um, Hubert's from the uh, Toulouse Anadiag office um, in the south of France there. Uh, and basically what Anadiag does is the same thing as Paracto, they test agrochemicals. Um, so I spent five months there working full time and enjoying my second summer. In uh, Toulouse, there are, there's a, we did a lot of um, trials in cereals, also in sunflowers, uh, a lot of vineyards, you know how much French people like their wine. Um, yeah, and both basically uh, fungicides and herbicides what we're, we're uh, focusing on. Uh, we had some other trials as well, like um, we <laughs> there was a trial in snail bait, so we spent a lovely morning searching the, the office gardens for snails. We got about 100 of them, but in the end we needed a few more, so luckily France is one of those places you can drive to a snail farm and get a whole fresh bucket of escargot. Uh, we had some trials in organic products as well, which had some interesting results. Uh, that's one of the locals. He uh, liked to watch us when we went to the vineyards and made a lot of noise. Um, we, yes, we had, a, oh, we did a lot of taste testing, which is one of my favourite parts of this job. We, we got to taste test table grapes, strawberries, and I spent my last two weeks peeling potatoes and mashing them up and making chips out of them. But that was all right, because we got to eat them all at the end. Um, we also had a lot of trials in vineyards. That's me learning how to use the atomizer to, to spray the trials. Um, oh, I found a hemp crop, <laughs> and I thought that was cool. Uh, that's not a very exciting picture, but what you can see there is one of our trial sites, just all around here. Um, basically, it's just we just plot out the trial in rectangles, and there are probably four to six reps in that. I think that was a trial in pre-emergent herbicide in sunflowers. Um, oh, lots of lots of fruit as well, which was delicious. Sometimes we'd finish a trial, and there'd be huge boxes left of of produce that we could all take home, which was another benefit. Uh, we had an awful lot of grape trials. Now this is the Negret grape. It's grown almost exclusively in a small town just uh, north of Toulouse called Ponton. Um, but it's very susceptible to botrytis and powdery mildew. So we had a lot of fungicide trials in those. Um, another assessment we did on some vineyards was there were little tiny mites. They were very rare, so we had to go a long way to find them. But basically, for an assessment, we take hundreds of leaves out of the trial and just stare all day with a microscope, not a microscope, a magnifying glass, trying to count the number of tiny, tiny mites. And because I was the youngest and I had the best eyesight, I ended up doing most of it. And at the end of the day, I've had very sore eyes. But on the whole, it was uh, a lot of fun. And I really think that working in a job like this is the best way to explore countryside, especially like in the south of France. It's extremely beautiful. Uh, we got to meet some lovely French farmers who were very, very sweet. And uh, we got to lunch in local restaurants all the time, which I didn't mind at all. And at the same time, we did a lot of valuable research. Um, so after I finished up in Toulouse, oh, that's another trial we had in Phomopsis and Sunflowers. Uh, that would rot the nodes on the plant and eventually stem down the stem and just kill it, which wasn't very nice. Um, when I came home, uh, my dad, who is a plant pathologist, said to me, right, you've got to come and work for me tomorrow. So I didn't get one day of rest after I got home from Europe. I went straight to work for dad. And he said, yeah, he said, you have to come and work for me. No choice. Um, and he works in the poppy industry in Tasmania, which Tasmania actually produces 50% of the world's pharmaceutical poppies. Uh, before I went and worked for Dad, I didn't really realise what he did at work. He just sort of stabbed, he went off to work and I didn't know much about it. But turns out he's been doing exactly the same research that I've been learning about for the past year. So that was really interesting to work with him and see uh, just, just 
the slight differences in what he does, and we had a few arguments about how to do things best. Um, yeah. So I loved working with Dad because Tasmania is actually quite beautiful. And that's Mount Roland there, where we've been. Uh, a lot of picturesque trials out there. Um, so I guess you could say these experiences have, have strongly influenced me. I'm lucky enough that I've had some experience before beginning my studies, so I know what I enjoy and I don't enjoy. For example, I know that field work is definitely something I want to be a big part of my career. Uh, I don't know about you guys, and maybe because I haven't done it year after year, but I love the feeling of coming home from work and just being exhausted and sore all over and covered with mud from being out in the field all day. I just find it really, really satisfying, like a feeling of accomplishment. Um, one of the things I've learnt from this experience is that while I'm not a huge fan of using a lot of chemicals in food production, it does play a huge role and people need to understand that um, we couldn't meet the market's demand for quantity and quality and price without the use of agrochemicals. Uh, it also takes a lot of manpower to have them tested and uh, make sure that they meet Australian standards. Um, and the more people doing this research, the, the better, the safer, and the more cost-effective products we have onto the market faster. So, although I've worked a little bit in the industry, uh, my passion for agriculture has really come from education. And mainly for me, that has been through the Pixie program. And I can see that university is just going to further my, increase my passion. But it's important to get students to a point where they want to study agriculture at university and that's only going to happen before they reach university level so we need to engage them while they're still at school and this is what Pixie does. Not everyone comes into, into contact with a program like Pixie so it's important in my opinion that agriculture becomes more prevalent in the education system. It needs to be, it definitely needs to be addressed more than it is at the moment. Uh, I'm sure you all know and we've been hearing all morning that world population is predicted to reach 9 billion by 2050. Uh, food, ex food demand is expected to double by then, and not just because of populations, but also dietary change and demand from developing countries. Uh, unfortunately, the demand in Asia is particular for livestock and animal products, and that puts further strain on the food supply. Um, obviously, it's not something we can help at the moment. All we can do is try to meet the demand, but again, it comes back to education, that people understand that it's more sustainable and more water efficient and energy efficient and land efficient to produce more fruit and vegetables uh, than it is, and cereals than it is to produce a lot of livestock and dairy products. Uh, and in a lot of ways, it's quite, it's more nutritious as well. Uh, this is just an inter interesting graph I pinched off one of my lecturers last week. Um, and what it shows is the rural population, rural, rural and uh, urban population in the world. Um, and you can see in 2010, it's the uh, urban population has met and overtaken the rural populations of the world. Uh, what does that mean? What it means uh, is that more than half the world is not producing food for itself. It does not have direct access to agriculture. And more than likely, uh, that it means that the urban population lacks knowledge about agriculture and, and lacks knowledge about where their food comes from and how to produce it, and most dangerously, I think, about the importance of having this knowledge and about having flourishing rural populations. Uh, so obviously, education has a big role to play right now and in the near future, especially in a country like Australia, where, uh, where agriculture, the potential for agriculture is huge, and it's going to be, and it is a huge part of our economy. And we have a lot of challenges to meet food security for the future, not only for ourselves, but also uh, the high demand in other parts of the world, particularly developing countries, and uh, especially our neighbours in Asia. So obviously graduates in the field of agriculture uh, are in high demand, whether scientists, economists, business people. Um, in fact, studies have shown that there is a market for about 2,000 graduates within Australia per year, but the 12 universities teaching agriculture are only providing about 800 graduates between them per year. So students really need to know about the, op the, op the opportunities for employment in agriculture. Um, so personally, I'm very excited about meeting these challenges. 
I'm excited about the opportunities in agriculture. And right now I'm just happy to be back at school uh, delving into science in more depth. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to studying uh, genetics and microbiology in the future. And uh, particularly because of uh, a lot of interest in GM, I think it's a very interesting area to be researching. Um, and I hope that someday I'll be able to, I'll end up in a career that I love and and maybe I'll make some kind of contribution, no matter how big or small, to, uh, to future food security. So thank you.